Hi guys, it's Connie here. And I haven't checked in in a while. Again, I am still all torn up in this house. I'm on my patio and I'm using my um, selfie stick <laughs> to try and come and say hi. And I missed you guys. So I wanna come and say hi and I wanna give you an update. So all of the walls are in on my house. Um, they still need to put the shower in. They need to take the old floor out and put the new floor in. And they sent me a contract over the weekend and said, you didn't sign this. And I said, I didn't want to sign this one. I wanted to sign the previous one because I had asked them for a price for my closet and it was way too much money. I've got a walk-in closet and it was way too much money. And so I said, no, I'm just going to do the bedroom. Uh, extra because the rest of it was paid by insurance so I'm adding the bedroom to it and so now I have to wait till Monday till I can get a hold of them and straighten that out because the wood was supposed to have already been ordered and now since they don't think I've signed a contract they probably haven't ordered the wood so here I sat still in a mess I can't be in my living room which is where I normally film with you guys because it's really tore up everything is in there everything but my bedroom's not in there yet it's gonna be shortly <laughs> um, let's see I'm feeling better from the virus um, finally I have energy I'm um, walking about two miles a day I'm not doing it every day yet but I'm working on it so I'm feeling good about that um, I wanted to talk about my hair a little bit and I originally through my youth I had dark brown hair and then of course the gray starts to come in and so you start to color it and so I colored it for a long time and I was most of the time I was not happy with the color they couldn't get it right it had red in it I had no red in my hair naturally and um, it just was dry and, and I just wasn't happy with it. And then of course it was straight because that's what I thought I had to deal with. Then I found out, you know, the whole story of how I found out it was curly. So I won't go there again. Um, so I had, um, I decided to go gray. Big step. It's a big step guys, you know it is. It's huge. But I'm real happy I did it. What happened was I decided to color my hair mm, kind of a blonde sort of, you remember the other videos. Um, it was kind of a transition thing. And then I thought, well, I really like this blonde. Maybe I'll just keep it. So I kept it longer than I should have. And then I decided, okay, I'm going gray. Uh, it's gonna, sorry for the movement. It's a selfie stick. <laughs> um, it was gonna save me money. And so I decided to go ahead and um, start transitioning into the gray. Then the holidays came. Then I ended up with the virus and a very long recuperation, not as long as many have had, and I'm grateful for that, but it was long for me. And so it was about four months before I had, um, since I had cut my hair last. And so I thought, I'm going to make an appointment. It was so long. I just couldn't do anything with it. And so I went in and um, prior to that, about a year ago, I had started taking a liquid collagen. And a couple of months ago, I started taking a hair growth pill. And so, and then I had four months of not having my hair cut and collagen and the hair growth pill um, can tend to make your hair grow uh, faster and so I went in and I had my hair cut last week and I thought I went in with some blonde and some gray and when she cut my hair I said where'd the blonde go it's like the whole thing was gray I'm like how did that happen overnight she said well I told you your hair had grown a lot. And so I guess evidently between those two products and having been four months since my last haircut, 
It all went gray. Look at it. It's all gray. I feel like it did it overnight, but I'm happy with it. Um, I'm okay with it. And so I'll keep it and it's going to be cheaper. I won't have to fuss with, you know, bleaching it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do that. Um, in the last couple of weeks, my emotions have been up and down and all over the place. Um, I'm looking pretty good today, I think, emotionally and everything else. <coughs> However, a couple of weeks ago, um, I went through a lot and my, um, my house was in a mess and nothing was getting done and um, I had some paperwork dumped back on me that uh, someone else was doing that I wasn't prepared to get back at this time. Uh, recovering from the virus and the mess the house was in and trying to get everything done and so I was an emotional wreck <laughs> and I was gonna come in and tell you guys all about it uh, but I didn't make it and so I saved you all of that trauma but what I wanted to tell you that I learned from that trauma was that you know when my husband passed three and a half years ago, almost now. I, um, I thought I was strong. Before he passed, I knew he wasn't healthy. And I thought, I'm strong and I'm gonna be okay. And I can survive when the time comes and I can get out and do other things and I'll be all right. Well, you saw the mess I was in for a long time. So I wasn't so all right. And then, um, I'm gonna move. Sorry, my neighbor came out and I didn't want to. Now you've got, now you really got it. <laughs> Oh, that's not bad light. Maybe I should just stand back here for a minute. Maybe I can finish this. I got bottled water on my bar because this room is empty, if you can hear the echo. Um, but I wanted to tell you what I learned from that traumatic experience. You know, like I said, I thought I was strong and I was always, I always felt like I was the stronger of the two of us and that I would be okay and I could do this. Um, but, I went through my trials, as you know, and I got a little stronger. And um, one of the things that I've learned from most of the widows that I've talked to is that sometimes right away, sometimes in the first few months, sometimes a couple of years, but we have something happen to us that's traumatic. And I would say for me, it was this whole mess in my house along with the papers that someone else was, had lifted that burden from me and was taking on. And they just dumped it back on me without any explanation. They just said, here, you can have this back. And I had things due and things I had to do and uh, I wasn't prepared. So um, I got it all done, but a lot of stress. And so we usually have something happen to us. I might have mentioned this in another video. I have a neighbor um, friend and she, I think in the first six months, she had two very traumatic things happen to her. And then um, six months or a year later, she had another traumatic event happen to her and they were all physical to her. Um, and so it, it was, it took her a while to get over that. It, it just is like pulling the rug out from under you. And so if you haven't experienced that yet, I hope you don't, um, but most that I have talked to and now including myself and mine took three years to happen to me, but so many I've heard that it's happened to. And so make sure that when you start feeling better and, and you think you're strong and you can handle things, make sure you have a support structure, um, someone you can talk to, a girlfriend that's got your back, which I have, and I went to her, and um, she just really 
talk me through the whole thing and she was a godsend to me. She's the one that had me start this YouTube channel uh, four or five years ago. So grateful for a lot of things with her, but make sure that you've got a support structure uh, in place before it happens. And, and just along the way, you know, we have things that will catch us off guard and, and kind of um, bring things up again. And then if you're new, then you know you have things happen all the time. And so it really helps to have that support structure. And I hope that you guys are um, going ahead and getting yourself into a group. I've recommended that so often, that you get yourself into a group that um, it's a grief share group and you want it for widows only. It can be for men and women, but widows only. Widows and widowers, I guess. Because if it's for loss of other family members, um, the discussion is not the same. And the other thing I wanna share with that is make sure that you're in a group that one or two people do not dominate the conversation in the whole group, that there is conversation to be had and sharing stories from everyone because the only way we can grow is to share. And if you go into a group and you don't wanna share, that's okay. You know, they're gonna love on you. You don't even have to open your mouth except when you walk in, you introduce yourself and say your name and sign in. Otherwise, you don't have to open your mouth and they'll understand. Um, and you can just listen to other people because it helps to know that we're not alone. And I know you hear from me and you might have another couple of other YouTube ladies that you listen to, um, but I promise you, you need more. You need that support group. And it's a usually about a 12 week group. It's called uh, Grief Share is the name of it, I believe. And don't do one online, um, do it local, especially now that the virus uh, mandates have lifted for the most part and we can get back in public again. So um, find a local church, if you can, that has a grief share group, that's the best one to go to. And um, you can start in the middle of it or you can wait till the next round comes around because it is 12 weeks and then they take a week or two off and then they start over. Um, you have to purchase a book for like $10, $15, something like that. And that's the only fee that you have to pay. The rest of it's free. And so I really, really recommend that you do that. And the other thing that I recommend is that you go to Amazon and you get the book titled Widow to Widow. I had a friend uh, gift me with that book. She mailed it to me in uh, about four months after Gar passed. And it doesn't matter when you get the book right away six months, a year, get the book because you'll either get ideas for things that you can do um, for help or you will get confirmation that you're going the right direction. It's a very helpful book. I really, um, it really meant a lot to me. And uh, so I really appreciate that gift. And if I could, I would gift, every, if, gift one to every one of you people out there, all of the ladies and the gents and all my friends. Um, but I can't, so I can recommend it. It is not an expensive book, mm, 15, $20 max for the book. And um, so I really recommend that you get that. And so that said, um, I talked about the, um, my disaster and how it's coming and um, my trauma of getting all those papers and everything dumped on me, my friend as my support structure, uh, getting yourself in a group. I talked about my my overnight gray hair, what it felt like, you know, it wasn't, but it felt like it. And so you can see my walls are like totally empty. Everything is off of here. I've got shelving units there that are moved out. Everything is gone. And so we're moving along, um, but it's really, I think it's taken longer than it's supposed to take. So with that said, um, I'm glad I got to come in and catch up with you guys. And I thank you for watching. And uh, if you wanna hear more of what's going on in my life or how we can talk and share with each other or whatever, um, subscribe. And so we can stay in touch. 
and there's a little bell there if you want to be notified of when I've got any new videos coming out. And um, I'm on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, come and find me. All you have to do is look for Connie Norlean, C-O-N-N-I-E-N-O-R-L-E-E-N. -E -E I'm the only one on there with that name. It's not like Debbie Smith or something, you know. And so find me and friend me and then send me a private message and let me know that you friended me um, so I can make sure and look for it because sometimes the friend requests kind of get lost in the shuffle. Um, so let me know. And I look forward to continuing to chat with you guys. If you have any thoughts on anything I've shared or any questions on anything I've shared, um, go ahead and comment below and let me know. And... I hope you enjoy the book, Widow to Widow, and be sure to find yourself a grief share group if you haven't yet. And let me know your thoughts and your experiences about the book and about the grief share groups that you've gotten into. And, um, you know, a lot of us are about the same age, so I'd love to know what you think about the hair thing. Uh, not mine, whether you like it or not necessarily, but what are your thoughts on yourself? You know, are you gray? Do you want to go gray? What are your thoughts on all that? I'd love to know. All right. So I'm going to let you guys go. And I want to remind you, if no one else tells you today, I love you. Have an awesome day. Be blessed. And I'll be back soon. Bye for now.